Well, the millennial vote may also play a big role in Colorado's congressional races. In a couple of contests, longtime representatives are facing competition from candidates new to the political game. Republican George Anthonisopoulos is trying to unseat Congressman Ed Perlmutter, who has represented the 7th Congressional District for 10 years. Earlier, I chatted with Perlmutter and asked him what he's accomplished in the last decade. In terms of my accomplishments, you've got sort of constituent accomplishments and then legislative accomplishments. And I think constituent accomplishments, where you help an individual constituent, like we helped a couple, a couple families get their sons back from Syria just uh, last Friday. So you work to really help somebody with a big problem or a little problem, but make their life a little better. Legislatively, I would say, uh, helping to get um, our program going to get our astronauts to Mars, the Orion uh, program. To I've worked on all sorts of financial services, sort of banking issues as well. Uh, worked a lot on uh, the funding for the VA hospital. You've thrown a lot out there. Let's go back to the more serious constituent issue there. Most sure. recently, you were involved in getting two... Uh, fighters, non-military fighters, back to Colorado, back to Denver, to their families. They were killed uh, fighting as the uh, do we fighting call them a with coalition? the Kurds. Fighting uh, with the Kurds. Uh, for people that I can see, people having both sides of this, like they're not military. Why are we spending congressional time on this? Tell me how you, it came to your desk and what you went through to help these families get the bodies of their children back. So these two young men didn't qualify for our military, and there was a third out of Raleigh, North Carolina as well. Uh, we received word from a family in Arvada that their son had been killed in northern Syria, uh, fighting with the Kurds against ISIS. And they were having trouble figuring out how the bodies might be returned to the United States. And even though the State Department has a very dire warning about anybody going to northern Syria, you know, for fear of kidnapping or getting killed, and the ability of the U.S. to protect them over there is, is pretty limited, uh, we felt it was our responsibility to help the families figure out how to get their kids home. What does that take? A phone call from you to someone over in the Middle East? Oh, it took a lot, and my staff was uh, phenomenal in the way that they worked on this, but it involved our State Department and Homeland Security, the Kurds, the Iraqis, the Jordanians. Uh, it was a long journey and a difficult and kind of complex to get these bodies back because we don't have diplomatic relations really with the Syrians. And it was, uh, it was in a very dangerous part of the world. Just getting them out of Syria was hard. You also brought up the VA, and yes. we know everything that's gone wrong with building the new VA. Are we ever going to see documents or any kind of proof of who did what wrong, and will anyone essentially be fired over the course of the next few years? So I think what everybody needs to understand, it really isn't a construction issue, it's a contract issue. The design of the VA was for a billion dollars. The construction contract was for $600 million, and the VA was supposed to let the contractor and the architects work together to either shrink the size of the project or increase the contract price. They didn't do that. And that's where the VA, especially its lawyers, who have been fired, by the way, uh, the VA lawyers in the department, they were a real obstacle. They've been fired. They left. Uh, but ultimately, now we've worked out the financial arrangements, and it's about 75% complete, and we're going to start opening buildings this year. So it was really a contract fight, not really construction cost overrun. So the contractor wanted to be paid for its work, but the VA was trying to say, no, we're going to stick you with a billion-dollar project, but only pay you $600 million. And they lost, the VA lost in court on that subject. To the point of firings, I mean, these people still get their benefits and whatnot, so it's, it's well, a little different than So just they aren't with the VA anymore, particularly the lawyers. The head engineer is gone, and many of these people are gone. I think there's only one left that was at any senior level. Now, can their benefits be taken away? Is there some additional punishment that may need to occur? Well, my job is to try to g just get this hospital built because it will be fantastic for the veterans who live in the Denver area and Colorado, but really all the veterans from Montana to New Mexico. 
and we need to get it done, and that's what's happening now. And, you know, the enforcement piece will take care of itself. Strong proponent of Obamacare, locally in Colorado, will be voting on Colorado Care Amendment 69. Tell the voter your argument one way or the other. Uh, I oppose 69. Uh, I support the Affordable Care Act, and especially the public option component, which never was implemented or became part of the law as it was passed. Uh, I think that a single payer system, if it's nationwide, uh, makes some sense. But if it's a state by state, it's too expensive for any one state to do a single payer system. Then why wouldn't it be too expensive for the nation? You have a much bigger pool of insureds in that instance. And you don't have people coming from one state to another to try to enjoy the benefits that my, Colorado might have that Nevada doesn't or Nebraska doesn't. You recently voted against blocking the transfer of detainees from Guantanamo Bay to the United States, right. which doesn't mean they'd be coming to Colorado if that happens, but basically your vote was stopping it from happening altogether. Do you, and I know there's a little more nuance to that. Do you support detainees coming to the United States from Guantanamo Bay? I support closing Guantanamo Bay as a prison. It costs us like $2 million per prisoner per year. And I believe we have facilities, whether it's uh, you know, some fort in the middle of Kansas, like Fort Leavenworth, or correctional facilities uh, that would be able to contain these individuals, and at a price a lot less than a couple million dollars a year per prisoner that we have in Guantanamo Bay. Is Fremont County and Supermax one of those facilities? Supermax could be one of those facilities. And we've already had, you know, uh, terrorists and bombers at Supermax. Uh, the 1993, I think, bombing of the towers, we had one of those culprits uh, at Supermax. So I think our correctional facility can handle these people. Uh, whether they brought to Colorado or to Fort Leavenworth, that's a whole nother question. But Guantanamo Bay... Uh, that's gone on now for almost 10 years, and, or maybe longer, and some of these folks have never been brought to justice. They're just sitting there. And so I think we need to move forward on that. You're wearing your Broncos tie. The next time we have you on, I promise we will get to the oldest fantasy football league that I just learned about, but we have to wait till the next time you're on. Congressman Ed Perlman. Marshall, thanks for having me. Thanks. We'll be right back.